Okay, welcome back, dear friends. I am Dr. Kalim Raza. Today, in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the ossification of the bones, the ossification process, how many types of the ossification, how many types of the ossification centers. Then, second part of this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the difference between red and yellow marrow. And in third and final part, we are going to discuss about the parts of the lung bones. In our complete, you know, human body, we have got total two zero six bones. and some bones here you can see are lung bones especially the bones of the appendicular skeleton bones of the upper limb and lower limb and the longest bone is your thigh bone femur and then some bones are irregular bones and flat bones also like bone of the skull which is a part of the axial skeleton irregular bones like bones of the vertebral column and then you have got cismoid bones which the bone basically which grow in the tendons inside the tendons and this uh, you know patella is basically example of the typical cismoid bone and this bone lack periosteum so that's why in case of the fracture of the patella it will take lot of time to heal to recover and then you have got sinuses also like you have got maxillary sinus frontal sinus ethmoidal sinus all these you know bones are basically called as pneumatic bones because pneumo in latin it's mean air so these bones act as a conditioning for your respiratory system and also help in you know production of the resonance of your voice so these are the different you know types of the bones irregular bones flat bones and short bones like carpals and you know tarsals these are the short bones how basically bones developed in your body so remember ossification ossification mean the formation of the bone os mean bone ossification so bone development during your gestational age usually start by 6 7th week of your gestational age and bone ossification continues by age of 25 and that's why in this period you know you need lot of the minerals especially rich in vitamin d and calcium phosphate which basically develop and you know help in formation of the bones so calcium is required in addition vitamin d because calcium itself is regulated by vitamin d and both these minerals are regulated by your parathyroid hormone and you know in gestational age collagen protein is very important for the development of the bone skin tendons especially which type of the collagen type 1 and if anyone is having you know type 1 collagen deficiency it may lead to the bone defects tendons weak skin weak connective tissue and that the congenital defect disease to deficiency of type 1 collagen that is called as osteogenesis imperfecta later we will discuss about the osteogenesis of the brittle bone disease also so first thing first thing to understand that ossification usually start 6 week of the gestational age and continues by age of the 25 how many ossification centers there remember there are two ossification center so let me write please how many ossification centers we have got basically two ossification centers two ossification centers so you will write and you will make your notes also ossification centers there are two ossification centers one is primary primary ossification center and other is the secondary ossification center primary ossification center it basically help in the ossification of the bones during your gestational age during the fetal life and primary ossification center basically present in diaphysis of the lung bones remember in diaphysis like shaft or diaphysis and secondary ossification center will help in the ossification of the bone or the bone development after the birth till the age of the 25 so primary ossification center present in the diaphysis and secondary ossification center present in so you can write that primary ossification center present in diaphysis and secondary ossification center is present in epiphysis epiphysis like 
heads of the long nose. Next, another important thing that you have got basically three germs layer, three germs layer. You must write all this, you know, information. This is very important. That one is the endoderm. one is the ectoderm and third is the mesoderm these are three embryonic germ layers all you know muscles and bones musculoskeletal system is derived through the mesoderm nervous system is derived through the ectoderm and then endoderm the structures which are derived are the derivatives of the endoderm germ layers are basically your internal organ systems and how many you know bones basically first you, sh you should must write that that first bone to ossify in human body is the clavicle first bone another very important information clavicle which is also a long bone and this is basically horizontally placed clavicle is first bone to ossify and next thing remember that all bones especially you know flat bones of the skull are basically derived through ossification of mesenchymal tissue so we have got you know two types of the ossification the way i have told you we have got two ossification centers primary and secondary and same we have got two types of the ossification two types of the ossification one is the intramembranous intramembranous ossification and second is endochondral ossification endochondral ossification what is intramembranous ossification bones which are basically derived are ossified are ossified directly by mesenchymal tissue or by mesoderm this type of ossification is called as intramembranous ossification so what are the bones basically ossified by intramembranous ossification complete your skull skull bones except the mandible remember the exception please accept the mandible and what is the endochondral ossification this type of ossification is basically is dependent on hyaline cartilage model you have got basically three types of the cartilage one is the elastic one is the fibrous one is the hyaline which is the most abundant cartilage and deposition of the calcium in hyaline cartilage this cartilage will ossify into the bones so majority of your bones in your skeletal system are basically are ossified with the help of the hyaline cartilage so in this way you have to remember what is the basic difference between intramembranous and endochondral ossification intramembranous and then endochondral ossification later we will discuss you know few images also i will show important you know images now let's discuss the parts of the long bones another very important the long bone parts this is suppose this is humerus and this is diaphysis this is also called as shaft and here you have got head and here you have got the condyles so this is the diaphysis and this end is 
metaphysis this is also metaphysis meta meta mean in between so metaphysis or this is also called as epiphyseal end of the epiphyseal end of epiphyseal end of diaphysis remember because this is your epiphysis okay here is your epiphysis and this is also your epiphysis so metaphysis i have told you that metaphysis is also called as the epiphyseal end of the diaphysis and this shaft is basically diaphysis and this is epiphysis this is your growth plate or this is also called as epiphyseal plate growth plate or epiphyseal plate epiphyseal plate and this is also called as growth plate remember each long bone have basically two growth plates i have told you there are two types of the ossification center one is the primary which present in diaphysis one is the secondary which present in epiphysis you have got two types of the ossification one is the intramembranous second is endochondral and you have got two growth plates which help in the growth of bone and this growth plate is also called as epiphyseal plate and this growth plate write another information that this growth plate is made up of hyaline cartilage hyaline cartilage so with deposition of calcium in this cartilage it will help in the growth of the bones so if you will you know if you will uh, perform if you will take the x ray of newly born baby suppose this is i have got i have told you this is a humerus bone if you will take the x ray of newly born baby and only this much part of your bone will be visible this diaphysis epiphysis will be missing why because diaphysis is basically made up of primary ossification center which is already developed already ossified during the gestation life and this epiphysis is basically made up of secondary ossification center growth plate which is going to be you know ossified after the birth so remember this basic difference that uh, in new children newly born babies x ray and x ray you will only see the diaphysis so if growth plate is visible on this end it's mean bone is growing proximal to the shoulder joint in upward direction so only this one you know growth plate is visible other side is not visible because it's already completely ossified so remember this please and bone also receive the blood supply because inside bone you have got marrow marrow you have got yellow marrow which is basically the storage of the fats you have got red marrow so both you know red marrow and yellow marrow also receive the blood supply through arteries and now let's discuss that how basically arteries will supply blood to the bony tissue the outer covering of bone this covering of diaphysis or the shaft of bone this is called as periosteum this is called as periosteum periosteum is sticker like covering and this periosteum is connected to the shaft with the help of the connective tissue fibers and these fibers are called as sharpies fiber you will study in histology in detail so remember which fiber are going to connect the periosteum to the diaphysis or the shaft of the bone periosteum peri mean above so covering of the connective tissue of the sharpies fiber outer covering of the shaft this is called as periosteum inside the shaft inside the medullary cavity that covering is called as endosteum and mean inside endo and this is peri peri mean above outer so periosteum and here you can see this periosteum is only extended only extended only extended up to diaphysis and metaphysis it's not covering your epiphyseal end 
remember this very important point it's not covering your epiphyseal end because epiphyseal end epiphysis epiphysis is covered by epiphysis is covered by cartilage and this cartilage here in epiphysis is articular cartilage articular cartilage which is also a type of hyaline cartilage and this purpose of this articular cartilage is basically simply the articulation of the joint so epiphysis is covered by articular cartilage here you can see also and diaphysis and metaphysis is covered by this sticker like covering later i will show you the structure also and this is called as periosteum this is called as periosteum and inside the long bones you already know that inside the long bones you have got medullary cavity and inside this is let's suppose this is your medullary cavity here and in this medullary cavity you have got yellow marrow this so this marrow storage of the fats inside the lung bones this is called as yellow marrow it's present in diaphysis remember and, the, and the very important time to use that basically yellow marrow is present in uh, epiphysis spongy bone or the compact bone so remember this is a compact bone periosteum this bone is diaphysis is basically the compact bone remember this is a tough bend compact bend and uh, this epiphysis is basically the spongy bone sponge shaped bone and inside the spongy bone you have got red marrow inside the compact bone you have got medullary cavity and in medullary cavity you have got yellow marrow that's why that's why in case of the fracture of the lung bone especially the thigh bone femur it may lead to the dislodgement of these fat particle which enter in, into the blood circulation through the nutrient vein and they may you know block the pulmonary artery and that is called as fat embolism and it, it's very dangerous you know remember why because inside the lung bones you have got fats also so how basically periosteum and yellow marrow receiving the blood supply this periosteum will receive the blood supply through which artery through periosteal artery so remember the name periosteal artery periosteal artery periosteal artery an artery which is entering inside artery which is entering inside artery which is entering inside to the medullary cavity and supplying the blood to the yellow marrow and this artery is called as nutrient artery this artery is called as nutrient artery so here is your nutrient artery you can write the name nutrient artery and it's entering through the nutrient foramen so you will see the foramen is also like mental foramen in mandible bones have got nutrient foramen because vessels will pass through nerves will pass through these foramen and the vein which carry deoxygenated blood back that is called as nutrient vein here is your nutrient vein so both these structures are passing through nutrient foramen so remember this foramen so here is the periosteal artery and here will be the periosteal vein also this is the periosteal vein here and then you have got here metaphyseal artery which supply to the metaphysis and then you have got metaphyseal vein also metaphyseal vein and inside you know inside inside the epiphysis you have got red marrow and this part of bone is called as spongy bone this part of bone is called as this is sponge shape so this is called as spongy bone so another very important question that epiphyseal end or the spongy bone occupy which type of marrow yellow marrow or red marrow so remember spongy bone is having red marrow and in newly babies you know there is no yellow marrow there is only red marrow they need more you know red blood cells there is only red marrow but in late age in advanced age only there are few universal sites for the production of the red blood like you know vertebras vertebras iliac crust these are you know few are the sternum and body of the sternum this is the best site of the biopsy also so these are the you know bones uh, even in late age also they will help in the production of the uh, blood cell 
hemopoietic center so these are the vertebras illi crust like body of the vertebras illi crust and then uh, sternum so remember this you know uh, difference also and then this spongy bone is uh, occupying the red marrow and inside the red marrow you are receiving blood supply through which artery that is the epiphyseal artery so epiphyseal artery is coming inside and epiphyseal vein is exiting the spongy bone back side so these are you know very important points that you should must carry and uh, you should understand the significance of the yellow marrow red marrow which bones occupy basically yellow marrow and red marrow this is very important and then we have got different types of the uh, different types of the epiphyses also let me show you the structure okay here you can see different types of the epiphyses like you know head of the head of the femur these are the head of the humerus this type of epiphysis is called as pressure epiphysis which epiphysis pressure pressure epiphysis why this is called as pressure epiphysis because they help in the articulation of the long you know joints of the body and they will be a lot of the pressure so this is called as pressure epiphysis like head of the femur and head of the humerus and then traction epiphysis traction what is the meaning of the traction right please traction epiphysis traction epiphysis traction mean pull khinchao khinchao or what i don't know in my language so pull pull traction mean pull okay so pull you have you seen the greater this is the greater trochanter and this is the lesser trochanter or you will see you know in a humerus greater and lesser tubercle so this type of epiphysis traction epiphysis is basically developed due to the attachment due to the traction of the muscles and tendons so this is a site you know greater to canter lesser to canter or greater or lesser tubercle this is the site of the attachment of the tendons and muscles so due to the traction due to the pull this epiphysis will be developed and this type of epiphysis is called as traction epiphysis next please write next epiphysis next next epiphysis is basically the atavastic epiphysis atavastic here you can see the atavastic so what atavastic atavastic epiphysis what is the meaning of atavastic atavastic mean a remnant a remaining part of any bone in the human body like this caracoid process this is a caracoid process of the scapula it help in you know attachment of the clavicle also through the coraco clavicular ligament attachment of the acromion process through the coraco acromion ligament also a humerus will attach here with the help of the coraco humeral ligament so remember this caracoid process maybe once it was a complete bone in a human body but now this is just a remnant a remaining part like the bird beak here you can see this caracoid process so this type of epiphysis is called as atavistic epiphysis atavistic epiphysis and then number 4 number 4 right please aberrant epiphysis aberrant epiphysis aberrant mean unusual that this type of epiphysis usually didn't exist in human body so in some cases if it exists this is called as aberrant epiphysis and example of aberrant epiphysis that epiphysis at the distal end of the fest at the first meta tarsal this type of epiphysis is called as aberrant or unusual epiphysis okay let, let me show you few other images so here you can see uh, this is basically a section of your shin bone your tibia and we will start right from here this as you can see this is the diaphysis this is a diaphysis which, which i have told you this is basically the shaft lung bone and artery which enter inside inside uh, the medullary cavity through the nutrient foramen here this is a nutrient foramen please zoom this is a nutrient foramen you can zoom and then this is a nutrient vein which exit the medullary cavity and this is the nutrient artery which going inside so you can whatever you know we have discussed everything is visible in this structure and then this is the periosteum the sticker like covering here you can see this is the periosteum and then this is the periosteal vein this is the periosteal artery and this bone i have told you this is a tough bone compact bone this is a compact bone and remember i have told you that collagen which is required for the development of the bones during gestational age which is the major structural protein 
and which type of collagen type 1 if there is deficiency of the type 1 collagen there will be a disease that is called as osteogenesis imperfecta and clinical features of the osteogenesis imperfecta we have discussed in biochemistry lecture available on channel medicus platform that there will be weak bones there will be change in the color of the sclera also there will be deafness due to the abnormal auditory ossicles also so uh, connective tissue changes also so osteogenesis imperfecta is also important and here inside you can see this cavity is called as medullary cavity and this is the metaphyseal artery which supply to the metaphyses this is the metaphyseal vein and then here you can see this is the epiphyseal basically plate and this is the epiphyseal vein epiphyseal artery and this cartilage i have told you this is called as articular cartilage this is the epiphysis this is the metaphyses another you know another very important structure here you can see this is the articular cartilage this is the distal epiphysis this is the nutrient artery this is the periosteum this is the yellow marrow inside the medullary cavity this is the medullary cavity this is your compact bone this is inside i have told you endosteum this is the red marrow inside the spongy bone in epiphysis and this is the spongy bone inside this is the articular cartilage so basic purpose of this lecture was basically to give you a general concept about the ossification that how many types of the ossification in your body what is the difference between you know primary ossification center secondary ossification center what is difference between intramembranous center and endochondral ossification and then what is difference between yellow marrow red marrow so you will watch this lecture you will make your notes and then yes you will follow the study from your textbooks also if you find this lecture helpful share with your friends thank you for your consideration thank you